Welcome to Handy Coulter Studio Spotlight. Today we're spotlighting Sarah Watts, who is the head of product development here at Handy Coulter. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to Studio Spotlight. I'm Kim Sandberg, and today my special guest is Sarah Watts, who is a good friend <laughs> and also a co-worker here yes. at Handy Coulter. So, mm -hmm. Sarah, tell us what you do here at Handy Quilter. Great. Well, let's see. First of all, I've been at Handy Quilter for about 10 years now, so mm -hmm. a good chunk of time. Yeah. Um, and I, like you said, VP of product development. Mm -hmm. So I have a really, I think I have the most awesome job you in do. the entire company because I get to help us make really great products mm -hmm. for other quilters out there so that they can finish their quilts in their journey and create really great quilts to have out in the world. So I have by far the best job in the building, I think, um, <laughs> but I could be a little biased. So Just I've been here for about 10 years. Prior mm -hmm. to that, I worked in kind of healthcare, different types mm -hmm. of marketing, product marketing, okay. um, and I got a little burnt out. And I remember one time I just saw this little, this was back in the day of the monster.com job yes, emails. And I yes. thought, handy quilter, I have a handy quilter. Oh, you did? I had, yes, I had bought a handy oh, quilter machine. I had an okay. old HQ16 mm -hmm. um, on the lifetime table yes, kind of yes. setup. I had bought it used off mm -hmm. of like a classified, a local classified ad. Mm -hmm. um, and I was finishing quilts with that. Um, as wow. we all know, it can be a little tiresome to put our quilts through our domestic sewing machines. Yes. Um, my big thing, of course, was I had to move couches and <laughs> oh, clean, yeah. get down on my hands and knees to baste and then mm -hmm. to bring it over. And I thought there has to be a better way to do this. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, it was really, really cool to see that there was a whole kind of industry I had no idea that existed yeah. um, in the long arm market and in the quilting market. And I thought, I'm going to try that out and I have not looked back yet. So it's been a really, really fun adventure for me. It's been really awesome. meaningful for me to be able to work in an industry that I also feel so passionate about. Yeah. Um, as you're going to see here, <laughs> I brought just a few of my quilts, literally just a few. Um, Kim can attest to this. Yes, <laughs> I have a yes. lot of quilts. Um, so I'm going to take you on um, my journey. I, I always joke that I'm an aggressive quilter. Mm -hmm. um, I spend a lot of my spare time quilting. I go on retreats. Um, I quilt a lot at home. I drag these gals into quilts with me as well. So I'm really fun to be able to I'm excited to be able to sit here and share this journey with you guys. Exactly. Well, I'm I'm just so excited. <laughs> I've been I feel like I've been trying for years to get you to come and do a studio oh, spotlight. Oh, you're so, so sweet. It's um it is fun. It, Sarah is such a prolific quilter, and I love how you talk <laughs> about retreats. That's actually how yeah. I met you the first time. Was at a retreat, yes, and yes. we were sitting there talking, and you're like, you, you know, know, I work for this company. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm always on the lookout for yep. people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's yeah, full it's circle there. Huh? It has been really fun. Yeah. So let's talk about your quilting journey. Let's how, talk about it. How did you get into yeah. quilting? That's a great question. Yeah. So I was very much a tomboy. So mm -hmm. I had like the opposite of most people's journey into quilting. I didn't sew as a child. Okay. I didn't want to wear dresses. Uh, my mom was not a fan of that. She was very much <laughs> wanted a girly girl, and so did my grandmother. And we were very very close growing up. They tried to make me dresses. They tried to put me in them. There's quite a few pictures. I'll have to see if I can snag one mm -hmm. and share with you where I look very unhappy oh. wearing these dresses that my poor mom and my grandmother would make for me. Right. But I also loved my mom and my grandmother very, very much, and we were very close. Um, and I remember my mom dragged me into, dragged me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think of this now, but she dragged me in at the time in high school into a quilt store, a local quilt oh. shop. And I was kind of looking around and I thought, well, wait a second. These are just giant fabric puzzles. Mm -hmm. And I love puzzles. Like I could do this and then I don't have to wear them <laughs> after. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh, and no. so the summer between um, high school and college, I really wanted to spend some extra time with my grandmother. And I don't know how this came about oh. exactly, but I was like, hey, grandma, let's take some quilt classes at that quilt shop that my mom dragged me to. It'd be yeah. really fun. And the very, very first one they had, um, and as you're going to see my style, this is definitely not my style, but we did a lot of the Sunbonnet Sioux and the houses oh. and the hand applique. Mm -hmm. That was my very, very first experience into quilting wow. was like hand cutting out these like reproduction fabrics yep, yep. and hand applique. Um, houses wow. and sunbonnet sues um, and things with like grandma, that with though. my grandmother and so. it's really amazing I still have hers I finished mine she never finished hers so I do want to finish them and I'm I want to frame oh, them cool. and find a really great place because it's such a 
fond memory I have yeah. that we got to do that together. Um, she passed away shortly after, so I mean, it's so cool that I took that opportunity yeah. and I have that physical thing that I can hold on to uh -huh. um, and really cherish. Um, so we did that, and then they finally had like a more traditional learn to quilt, like, yes. hey, we'll do this in five weeks, you come back every time. Definitely got the quilt bug, definitely got bit by the quilt bug at that point. Um, and then of course I went off to college. Yeah, life changes. Life changes, <laughs> but I went to a small school in Oregon and there was a, a local quilt shop, and so I would kind of go oh. and wander around whenever Ooh. I could. Um, by myself because I think people looked at me a little strange in college about that one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I would wander around and I even like hand because <laughs> I didn't have a sewing machine yeah I even I like cut out with like my scissors yeah just like school scissors yeah. not nice scissors <laughs> 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 and then like I was hand stitching this like little pillow top um, oh. this little pillowcase and I just I just always really loved it so then I finally graduated finally kind of got out on my own my mom bought me a sewing machine. Awesome. Um, I think, well, really, I think she wanted a new one, and so yeah, I think I got her old one. You know how this goes, I right? do, I do. Yeah, <laughs> but I ended up with a sewing machine, and then I, I ended up really becoming prolific at that point. Um, so one of my favorite memories getting into quilting is I was in my early 20s, mm -hmm. I had a job, I, I had just moved to a new state, I didn't really know anybody, and I had a really great set of coworkers that were supportive, and I went to a local quilt shop, and um, this is probably now 25 plus years ago. <laughs> I mean, it was really popular in the summer for our local quilt shop. We had they called like a five dollar quilt. Mm -hmm. Do you yep. remember these? Yeah, I so do. You would pay I your five dollars. Mm -hmm. You would go, and it was a sampler. And this is what ended up coming oh, of this one. Look at that. So every week you would go in, and for you paid five dollars your first time. Yep. And if you came back, and they would show you instructions on how to cut out, um, how to put together each block. And if you came back the next week with mm -hmm. it done, you got your little Ziploc bag for free for the next block, right. and so on. Um, and I'm proud to say that the blocks only cost me $5. I Good showed up you. every time with it. Good for you. So that was very exciting. And then, of course, you had to buy your sashing and your border kit and right. everything. Right. Um, and, of course, this top, as you'll see, I don't always finish all my quilts. Uh, that's okay. Um, but I did end up finishing this one probably about 15 years after I finished the quilt top itself. Wow. Um, but it was a really fun experience. And it was also, I think, one of the eye-opening moments where... Mm -hmm. Quilting for me wasn't something I just do alone. Right. It was something I do with other people. Mm -hmm. There was a community. Yes. I remember at this quilt shop in particular, um, it got so big, <laughs> we couldn't go inside the shop. They had to like cone off the parking lot and every there was probably a hundred people oh out gosh. there at least. How and fun. there was probably five or six coworkers that joined me and it really became something we talked about all week. You know, it gave mm -hmm. us what we talked about at lunch and we'd have show and tells. And I just remember wow. that connection really, really early on. Yeah. You know, I had it with my grandmother, and then I had it with some coworkers and some friends, and that has really carried throughout my, my quilting journey, and it's one of my absolute favorite things about the quilting community itself, yeah. is yeah. those connections that we make. I know. I love that it's, uh, it's something <laughs> that we actually sit at home and do by yeah. ourselves, yes. but at the same time, it brings us together it with does. so many people. It and really it connects does. us with the past, mm -hmm. too. Yep. You know, yep. I love to see antique quilts, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether they're in museums or things like that, and it really creates just this, I'm going to say it, this thread of history backwards. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Um, but it's really powerful for me, and yeah. I, it's something I really appreciate. So obviously, this is probably not something, um, when I say something, these are probably not fabrics or style yeah. um, I would pick out um, on my own. Right. Um, and you're going to see kind of how things have evolved for me, but it's also something I'll probably keep forever to oh. have this memory. Well, so. and this was, um, I'm sure you learned a lot here. I did. About, you I know, did. Pacing. That's the point of sampling. And I'm really. not embarrassed. I'm embarrassed of a few corners um, <laughs> points but for the most part I'm really pr really proud of it yeah That's beautiful yeah oh, I think okay. it's great okay all right so we'll move on to the next one here so we're gonna fast forward quite a bit okay um and I want to talk about how I ended up with my first long arm yeah so again the whole having to move couches yeah. and cleaning things and I felt like I could only do straight lines I really wanted mm -hmm. to get into some to really expand that and to get more creative and to finish things um, kind of more how I visually had right. thought of them um, and wanted to finish them. So this was a little quilt that I got. So um, again, probably not my style necessarily, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but it was one of the first pieces that I really went through and tried to do some custom quilting. It's gorgeous. Um, I will allow you guys to do some close-ups. It's probably not my, <laughs> my best work, um, but sometimes, you know, we all start somewhere. Yep. And it's really important to not 
worry about it too much. Right. Um, you know, when we talk about our piecing journey and mm -hmm. our actual quilting journey, yeah. they can at times for a lot of us be two different journeys. Yeah. I made quilt tops, I got really good. Oh. And then I started quilting, mm -hmm. long arm quilting, mm -hmm. or being more brave even on my domestic sewing machine quilting. Yeah. And that didn't look so hot to begin with. And that's okay, it's, it's just yep. part of the journey. And although I maybe don't display this quilt very often, yeah. um, I do keep it and look back and think, gosh, I've come a long ways. Yeah. And I was really proud of myself for trying. Yeah, well, and I trying new great. things. Yeah. So fantastic. Yeah. What a fun what a what a fun quilt and the memories it brings yes. to you. You know? Yeah. What it represents in your journey. So then <laughs> I got a lot more brave with uh -huh. my long arm. Uh -huh. um, I think it helped that I worked here at Handy Quilter. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. could kind of come upstairs and I could get some tips. <laughs> I had access to a lot of really great educators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was maybe part of my job to watch things yeah. and to learn. Uh -huh. And it is because I is. need to know how people are using the long arms yep. to make sure that we have the features um, and all of the things that we need in a long arm so people can do what they want. Right. So this was probably one of my first um, quilts that I really went in and custom quilted. So there's no oh. pro stitcher. There's no robotics. Really? This is all wow. free motion and a lot of ruler work. Um, well, I used. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, I actually had a friend buying this because I didn't quite know what to do with this. And so sometimes friends are key. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but I went through and I custom quilted it. I, um, some, I had some friends that gave me some really fun ideas. I went through, I, I used it. an Angela Walters book. She uh -huh. had um, a hexagon type shaped book. And so I tried different things on each hexagon. Um, and I just love it. I do too. Uh, and I'm really excited. Uh, this is also probably was the beginning of my love of cotton and steel, which mm -hmm. is now uh, Ruby Star Society. Right. I've always very, very been a big fan of theirs and very been very drawn to their fabrics. Um, and so this was a really great sampler. And on the back I used. <laughs> oh, of course. I went for it and I used kind of their sparkly um, solid-ish fabric. Yeah. But I also love that it shows off the quilting. Mm -hmm. I was like, wasn't sure how it was going to turn out but I didn't want to be embarrassed by it and I wanted to be able to see it. So this is one of my favorite quilts. And as you can tell, a lot of my quilts get used. I we love are, that. We are, yeah, in my household, we use quilts. Mm -hmm. We stand on them, we eat on them, we put them in the car, we, we put them on the dirt. Um, we are the not, dogs. The dogs are on them. We are not scared to use quilts. So some of these are very loved. I love washing quilts. We're gonna talk about oh, washing yes, and some situations yes. that occur later. Um, uh. So there is always challenges, but, um, I'm definitely, you make a quilt and you use it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny when I give quilts as gifts, mm -hmm. the one thing I always tell people, use it, wash it, love it. And I said, the best compliment you could ever give me is you come back and say, hey, something happened. My binding is starting to come off. Oh, There's yeah. a hole in it, uh -huh. something like that. Cause then I know that it's been well loved and used. Exactly. I don't exactly. think I'm this type. I am not the type of quilter that does more art type quilts. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have a few that hang on walls and yeah. that I may not use, but for the majority of my quilts, I want them to be used and loved. And they are, they're they so are gorgeous. Very loved. <laughs> they're very loved. I, 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 yeah, yeah, me too. I'm not yeah. in the same way. So tell us about this quilt. Yeah, this so is really this, fun. this is a little different style for me. It's very mm -hmm. kind of primary in color. So mm -hmm. my son, this is probably, I'm trying to think, he was probably maybe the 10, 11-ish mm -hmm. range. We were redoing his room kind of from that little boy to maybe more of a tween mm -hmm. type room style. Um, and that's been another really fun thing about quilting is my kids have always really appreciated yeah. it. Um, and they get involved. So he went to the quilt store. He had actually pick, went through some magazines wow. that I had. He picked out the quilt top pattern. We went and How he fun. picked out all the colors. He told me where he wanted them to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then he even picked out some of the quilting designs. So they're a little bit probably more linear, mm -hmm. uh, ge geometrical type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually went through, and this is one of the first ones that I custom quilted um, using the robotics long arm system, our pro stitcher. Yeah. So I wasn't doing just an edge to edge. I really went through um, and you know, used some of the different yeah. um, aspects of the quilt top with some of the lines and the squares and the rectangles and really tried to go in and place things that fit. Well, I love, I love how you really created an interesting secondary set of designs here mm -hmm. by where you place things. It, it just makes it feel so modern, very, very modern. Yeah. I love it. Love it, love it, love he it. He picked out the quilt, the excuse me, the thread colors mm -hmm. and everything. He wanted the blues to pop. He was very involved, oh, and it's gorgeous. such a fun quilt to have, such fun memories with with my kids that they were so involved in these. Yeah, 
I love it. So that's that one. Awesome. This is another one where I got a little brave. I often, the majority of my quilts, as you'll see more and more, I would say I'm much more of an edge to edge quilter, mm -hmm. which means I bring in one pattern, I repeat it, and it just kind of goes, it just quilts all over the thing. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty easy to do. They're fast, yeah. they're yeah. quick. Yeah. We're using the quilts, it's okay. Yeah. Occasionally I like to challenge myself and do a little bit more custom. Mm -hmm. And so this was another one where I went through oh. and I did some custom quilting. Um, again, using the quilt top, mm -hmm. um, the piecing. shapes, the piecing, um, and playing off of that, doing some echoing. Um, and filling it in. I love so. this. So did you use rulers to this create one, your spaces? I did not. I used all pro stitchers. So I oh, marked things, wow. created the straight lines, and Dang. then filled it in. Yep. Very cool. It's gorgeous. Thank you. It's really fun. Yeah, it's a fun one. Okay. Right. Oh, now we're so, getting into. <laughs> so yes, I am a huge Halloween fan. Yes. So I think I probably make, as a whole, more Halloween-based mm -hmm. quilts than anything else. So this was another very early example mm -hmm. um, of a quilt that I put together. Um, you know, maybe not my style today, um, but I went so through cute. and I and I was really what I consider brave with the quilting. Mm -hmm. You know, I went in and I tried to do oh, yeah. some trees. I did some spiders. I tried to make it look foggy. I tried to do some spider webs, and um, really excited with how it turned out. And it's not perfect, um, but I love it, and it's part of my journey. And who right. doesn't love Halloween? I know. Seriously. Yeah. I love Halloween. If you love Halloween, so many... you might want to just fast forward a few minutes. <laughs> 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 All right. So this is another love of mine mm. is Tula Pink Fabric. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of her older, older, older lines, Nightshade. Yep. yep. Um, and so this is very dear to my heart. This is very hard to come by fabric nowadays. Yes. Um, but I went through and I also custom quilted this one. And I just love, love, love how it turned out and all the texture that it brings mm -hmm. in the background, how the faces oh. pop, um, how yeah. the border pops on it. And so it's just one of my absolute favorite quilts. I love, I just think it should be Halloween year round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe oh. I should start doing that in my I house. I see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing at all. No. I love yeah. how you've got, you've got a spider web here. Mm -hmm. You outlined, you um, echo quilted mm -hmm. around the faces, yeah. and then your feather out here is gorgeous. Thank you. Very and nice. I, I used a solid back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we oh so you some. can really see. So you can really see what, what happened beautiful. here. So just love it. I, I know that solid backings maybe always aren't, you know, they can as be. visually fun as maybe some fun print, oh, except but it can, can really quilting. shows off the quilting, exactly. and it really takes, I think, your quilts to another another level. Yeah. So I always I always like to think of if it's a quilt that I really want to be able to show the quilting, mm -hmm. do a solid back because yes. that way you can see. Yeah, gorgeous. So this is one of my most recent finishes. Oh, um, I was so a, uh, I go on a, a quilt retreat every year with a few girlfriends mm -hmm. in Oregon. Lovely, lovely setting. We're over kind of by the sea, um, and this was one of my most recent ones. Um, of course, it's the gorgeous. glam clam, and um, it's not finished. We don't all finish our quilts yep. as quickly as possible. Um, I do have the backing, very excited. Um, oh, I'm not gorgeous. sure, we might need to discuss how this I one know. gets quilted and maybe we can share with the viewers along the way. Um, that would be fun. If we custom this, if we uh -huh. do some custom clams, if it's an edge to edge, yeah. what ends up happening? But I just oh, I love, 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 love Halloween. I know. So I that's couldn't so leave fun. this one out. Well, and I love this one too, because that's like a whole fall. Like it from is September it is. till the end of November. It is. Same with this one. When I say Halloween, I really mean all of fall. And you'll yeah. see that throughout a lot of quilts. A lot of mine are very autumn, fall inspired. So this is a fun pumpkin quilt. Um, I just so adored cute. it. Um, I did a fun little pumpkin edge to edge on mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. for the long arming. Um, of course, I love the buffalo plaid. Buffalo plaid on the back. Very classic. Mm -hmm. um, I just. I love it. And your little bit of sparkle on the binding too. Yes. So yes. fun. Little binding, little sparkle, just a little pizzazz there. Add, add a, little, okay. a little pop. So I am a oh. sucker, a sucker, sucker, <laughs> sucker for prints um, and things that are a little quirky. And of course the Gastly's I have loved for years. So yeah. this is one of my favorite quilts love that them. I've ever done. Um, and it shows off the family. Um, you know, sometimes it's a challenge for us as quilters. We get sucked into these really, really fun prints. Yeah. Let's see if we can zoom into some of them. You know, these little families, yeah. these people, I and know. it's how do we, how do we find the right quilt top pattern for them? How do we mm -hmm. cut them? How do we use them effectively without it becoming a mess? And I loved this pattern. I think it's an old Sarah 
Spielk. I'm not sure if I'm saying her mm -hmm. last name correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really fun way of having these big prints, yeah. allowing them to be big, allowing them you to enjoy the whole visual aspect of them, um, and still having a really fun piece, uh, piecing around it. And then, of course, the backing. It's always the fun place <laughs> to show off the really big, fun prints. Yeah. Uh, so this is, of course, oh. um, a whole ghastly family. Yes, the family gallery. The family gallery. I love it. It's fun. Yeah, I love it. That's yeah. great. And of course, you sometimes need a good old classic mm -hmm. um, ghost simple. quilt. Simple. Simple ghost quilt here. Um, sometimes working with solids can be a little boring, mm -hmm. but I love yeah. the visual impact at the end that they have. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's showing up on film, but having the little Essex sparkles mm -hmm. for the eyes and the mouth just really pop. Um, and that's just another fun. And then it's always fun to see how, you know, just using a really simple edge to edge all mm -hmm. over can really, really just bring out a quilt. Yeah. Well, I love this one because when you look at it from a ways away, it just looks like texture and then you mm -hmm. get close and you realize it's spider webs and spiders. There are spiders in like it. There's spider webs. Yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. And of course, I love to play with different types of backing fabrics mm -hmm. as well. So this is a, a nice flannel. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not washed this one up yet, so I'm excited. I think I it'll get really snuggly. It almost, I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. it hasn't been washed yet. I know, it's one of the few I haven't. Yeah, just hasn't hasn't happened yet. Just hasn't happened yet. That's okay. Okay, so we're gonna transition oh, a little bit. This is so cool. Um, we talked, I've talked a little bit about how much I love the quilting community yeah. and the connections and the people along the way. Um, I had a, a privilege of meeting a group of, of ladies that I just fell in love with and, and we've been friends and we've done other quilt retreats throughout. Mm -hmm the years and we did a round robin um, and this was kind of more of a row along robin instead gotcha. of like a round robin uh -huh, i guess uh -huh. um, but it's been really really fun and exciting to have this so i think i did i think i did the create okay i think that's what it's i gorgeous. did gorgeous it's gorgeous um, and then it, it went around to all the ladies and they each added their own little flavors to it um, as it went by. Everyone did a different row. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I just love it and I, I've kept the, the emails and the little notes that came with uh -huh. each of them uh -huh. um, so I know who did what and what just a fun physical reminder of just wonderful people and uh -huh. experiences I've been able to have and be a part of um, throughout the quilting community um, and because of it and I just I love I love when you can take when you can see or feel a quilt and it takes you back to when you were either making it, buying the yes. fabric for it, finishing yes. it, who was around you and it's just like a it's just like a Tangible. time capsule history hug Ooh, every time. I like that. Yeah. Time capsule history hug. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So yeah, Kim, so this is we cannot we can't just ignore. Yes. That yes. We, this, this one, one sat a, for a while and we've got some and we have some we have some bleeding. Some that's bleeding. Happened. So There's this has not here. been dried, and yeah. um, and maybe we will use this one in a future episode yeah. to talk about how we handle quilts that yeah. have had some bleeding, how what the best tactics, the best things to go about, and to try to to kind of save Remove this, so them. to speak. Even if I could never save this, and this is how it is forever, I'm still going <laughs> to love and adore it because of the memories and the yeah. people associated with it. Um, but things happen. Yeah, um, they do. Life happens. Color catchers. Are your friends? Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> pre-washing occasionally. I'm not. I'm not a pre-washer. Are you a pre-washer? Oh heavens, no. I'm not a pre-washer. Who's got time for that? Mm -hmm. um, some people do, and of course, when I see this, I think well, maybe they're onto something. <laughs> but you have a point. No, well, Christina exactly. and I actually were talking yesterday about. We're actually planning this episode Good. right now. So well, I will now we have a quilt. quilt. We I'll leave this quilt, <laughs> and you guys can work your magic on we it. We will. We'll see. We'll see if what we can do. Yeah. Oh, so again, I've so mentioned bad. my love of tulip pink fabric. Um, so I have a lot of tulip pink fabric in my stash, um, and it's just been, it's one of those designers where sometimes, you know, fabric can feel maybe a little old fashioned, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and very early on in my quilting journey, it was really fun to find a designer that I kind of thought was cool and hip and was doing different yeah. things and kind of fit more my personality. Yeah. Um, and this was one that I did uh, trying to use all the different lines and all the different colors. Yeah. So it's a fun little sampler of a whole bunch of tulip pink fabrics in it. And just a really simple, you know, flying geese kind of a pattern. Oh, it's so cute though yeah. with the with the little uh, like, I, I'm like, how many patches is that? It's a nine plus yes. six. So yeah, it's uh, kind of combining. 15 patch. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, and, and a nice little rainbow. And yeah. so it's just a fun way to have um, as many as I could anyways mm -hmm. in one her quilt. prints in one quilt and to be able to have that. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I know, that's so fun. 
This was one that I did. Um, again, I custom quilted it. This is a little bit of, there is some pro stitcher. This is one of those where I combined some pro stitcher mm -hmm. and I combined ruler work and I combined some free motion in there. So yeah. um, this the is quilting. one of those where it really started to, you know, you can kind of see the evolution in my quilting, yeah. uh, being able to go from just an edge to edge to some more custom pro stitcher yeah. to being able to combine some pro stitcher with some you know, um, free motion, for example, this yeah. was a pro stitcher right here. Oh yeah. This is okay. a drift or something. Mm -hmm. I did that and then I went through and I did the squiggly lines up and down really as free motion. Off. I used a ruler, one of our wave, wave rulers, rulers for here and then I free motioned in it. Love so I really love, you know, just because somebody has a robotic system or a mm -hmm. quilting system, doesn't mean you're stuck doing that. It's yep. just another tool that you can use to finish quilts in new and unique ways. I love that. I love that. That's gorgeous. Now, we have another tulip we do. quilt right here. We do. And this is another experience. So my mom and I, a few years back, we went on um, a quilting cruise that Tula Pink was one of the headliners, one of the three headliners for teacher, as, as one of the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I got this beautiful experience with my mom. I got to meet great quilters that I would never have had the opportunity to. I have this really core kind of memory of combining going to Alaska for the first time, being on my first cruise, um, meeting Tula Pink, meeting new people, having that time with my mom, and it was just such a fun fun experience. I love this quilt that, that um, came from it. Um, I also, of course, embarrassed myself and made her, made Tula sign one of my little squares there I at the that. end. So I have her signature in it as well. Yeah. Um, nothing better than, than being a little geek, a little fan yeah. geeking there. So well, you, She yeah. was there. You were there. She was there. Why not? She was there. I was Why there. Why not? <laughs> I was, I, I, you know, it was funny. I did it and then it just started the trend and then everybody, everybody was doing it. <laughs> By the end yeah oh I don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah. I love that you did that with your mom though too I did That's yeah so yeah combining so yes. many things awesome things right. all in one yeah That's great okay so we're gonna do a little yes, transition one. here yeah um, I have some quilts um, so this is probably getting into a more current color palettes that I like mm -hmm. I love combining not just our typical quilting co cotton fabric mm -hmm. but also you know linens yeah. and different wovens textures. and getting different textures into this I also oh, adore gorgeous. Elizabeth Hartman patterns mm -hmm. um, she makes just the most darling patterns all of her patterns are so well written yes. I know they can look intimidating at times <laughs> but and they are a lot of work you do have to kind of keep things straight yep um, you do have to do a lot of cutting but I'm telling you they're worth it she oh, walks yeah. you through every little step um, this is probably this is my most recent finish I still need to get some binding on it um, but no big deal um, but I just I love this oh. so much and I love all the different textures and I cannot wait to wash this up. Um, I also have a woven on the back as well. Um, and I use bamboo plaid. batting. It's the plaid. It's the plaid. <laughs> it's the plaid. <laughs> this is like her favorite plaid. It is. I have two prints that I love and I'm trying to order more of and I seem I to not be able to. But, but that's it's on okay. Back, it's on back order. It's on back, it's on order. back order. It's, it's going coming at some point. So I keep hoping. I know. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited. I love playing with textures. We're going to see that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, and then using a bamboo batting as well yeah. can yeah, also, so once it gets soft. washed up, it, they really turn into some incredible yeah. quilts to, to play with and feel. Drapey mm -hmm. and, mm. oh, another beautiful Elizabeth yes. Hartman. Oh, and this yes. is, uh, and this, this has, is Liberty. Is it Liberty? Um, it's or? not, but it's the Liberty feel. It was right. actually a Moda line. Oh, Again, okay. playing with some okay. textures. Yeah. This is also when um, beige took over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've had some beige hostile takeovers. We've had some grays. You yes. know, we've had whites. Um, you know, there's always a trend as to what the most common popular background color mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, and this was definitely in the tan beige phase. Yeah. Um, another one that I actually made a whole bunch. I made as many of these little cute fox faces as I could. So and then I gave one to my mom and I kept one. So we each kind of have little twinner quilts. I love yeah. it. I love it. It's so fun. Yeah. And then I did use, again, this soft fabric oh, on the background. Yeah. This is another one oh. I have not used a ton yet. Yeah. Um, and I haven't washed, but I know it will wash up really well. Oh, I yeah. think this has actually been on a lot of quilt ladders, either in my office yeah. or at home. It's been one that I've I've say. used more for decorative purposes, probably because it's a little bit smaller. You'll notice most yeah. of my quilts are pretty large. Mm -hmm. um, and this is probably would make a really great baby quilt. Yeah. 
correct. Yeah, it's the right you size. Cannot oh. go without talking about the Bjorn Bear. I know. <laughs> I just I love, love this, this one. one. Um, I love oh. the use of solids with yep. a little bit of like the plaids and a little bit of prints here and mm -hmm. there just to give it a little bit more pop. Again, takes a little bit to cut out and to organize oh, um, and to sew it, but I just love it and I think they're worth every second. So cute. Yeah. So cute. I love this one. Yeah. All those fun colors too. Yes. The rainbows. Rainbow yes. effect. It's awesome. This is not Elizabeth Hartman, but I'm still very, <laughs> very it's into it's Esky, right? It is. It's adjacent. It's, it's adjacent. adjacent. <laughs> it's Elizabeth Hartman adjacent. Um, but I love the little snails. Oh, so I cute. love to find. So this is. I don't know if we can get a close up, um, but this is a an old rifle paper print uh -huh. um, company print, and it's the Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. And I really wanted to find a quilt top pattern that would show off. Mm -hmm. um, and not just cut up all of these really great cute yeah. prints um, and also kind of had a Alice in Wonderland feel and so yeah. when I think about the forest and I think about all of the different animals involved yeah. the snails really um, hit home so I, I love this one it's so perfect yeah it's so cute and then of course to find a really fun yes. magical backing oh. is always really exciting to kind of give it a little pop right yeah those are, those are my favorite they <laughs> yeah. hide all kinds of tension yeah. whatever yeah <laughs> another oh, fun thing so I love cute. to do panels let's talk mm -hmm. about panels for I a second know. sometimes I think panels can kind of get a bad rap I know and I love panels whether you're Me just too. wanting to practice some quilting or yeah. a quick project or yeah. gifts they're really great and also don't be shy to cut them up a little bit yeah. Um, and then I just did some easy piecing mm -hmm. around them and I just think it turned oh, into a really, really fun adorable. quilt. I love this. Yeah, yeah I, I, I always hate when I hear somebody refer to a panel as something like a cheater. Yeah, a cheater or, yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. a cheater, it's still a quilt. It's well, and still it's very such much a, a fun quilt. way, you know, to take really popular colors. Mm -hmm. You know, this is very popular yeah. color scheme over the last few years. Mm -hmm. You know, the llamas are popular, yes. the cacti yeah. is popular, the <laughs> rainbows. So it's probably not something that's going to stand up over, you know, many, many years. But it's a super fun way, and I just think this needs to find a fun oh, little home for a little, a little kid or yeah. younger child or something. I think would really love this quilt. I love it. It's a snapshot of what yeah. you're into right yes. now too. Yeah. Which I love. Okay, oh. <laughs> we all accumulate some stashes, right? So I have been accumulating, acquiring, yes. um, probably for 25 years of, uh -huh. of fabrics. Um, and so at times I see some quilt tops or some quilt alongs. Instagram has a really fun community Cutters, yes. of people that you know do different quilts and uh -huh. scraps and yep. summers and this and that. And so this is one I kind of joined on a bandwagon. As you can tell, it's been done, it's been quilted, it has not been trimmed and it has not I been know. bound. But it's a really you fun. Got your little just going through cluster. all of my, <laughs> going through all of my scraps and just picking out and making really really fun um, picnic type quilt. Well, so. and the rainbow effect here is yes, awesome. Yes. I love that. Yeah, just it's just really, really fun bright quilt. Yeah, just, I mean, if this doesn't make you smile, I'm, oh yeah, seriously, yeah. seriously. Yeah. So it's always fun showing off all the little prints from your fabric that you've had for maybe a little too long yeah. and using them up. Well, and all those so. precious little bits yes. that you just can't bring do you yourself throw to throw away. away. What do you do? All those Here little two and a half inch squares, yada yeah. yada. So great. Um, this is another uh, popular one. I think mm -hmm. this is a Then Came June. It's a free okay. pattern. I think it's called Peanut Butter Quilt or something. Oh, Again, cute. another one that people on Instagram <laughs> were really excited about. And yeah. I thought, I've got some scraps to use. Nice. I can do that. And I just, you know, I really do love scrap quilts and mm -hmm. I love it. They're bright. I love it when they're simple. I yeah. love low volume ones. Mm -hmm. This is probably the second or third, what I would consider more of a low volume scrap mm -hmm. quilt. I think they're very underrated <laughs> and I yeah. love them a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, and making them the, the showpiece because they mm -hmm. usually are the background. Yes. Giving Let these them a cute little prints shine. There are so many cute little prints in this. There's little roller bananas. skates, there's strawberries, there's birds. I mean, glasses. Yeah. So it's, it is fun. You're right I to let it. the, what we would typically think of the background pieces be the star of the show for a minute. Yep. All oh, right. So now I we're moving probably into more, my more current loves of life. So right. again, lots of different fabric types. We've got linens, we've got wovens, we've got prints. I mean, I'll put whatever in. I put flannels in, I mix them yeah. all up. I'm not particular about it. Um, and I love probably this more kind of modern um, colors and aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, and again, kind of combining, you know, I love 
not just a typical block pattern, but yeah. you know, whether it's, yeah. you know, a Bjorn bear or whether yeah. it's mittens or whatever, I'm kind of a sucker for these sort of things. You, you definitely don't do traditional blocks. Not very often. You like to do block quilts, but you like to do mm -hmm. something like this that's fun and modern. Yeah. I mean, the mitten, the bears, the, right. you know, the llamas, it's yeah. all the cute. You like to make cute things. I do, I do. And <laughs> again, okay you know, using kind of a flannel on the uh -huh, background, uh -huh. on the backing, I think, you know, this is gonna really wash up nicely oh, yeah. over time. Yeah. Um, and be nice and warm. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, I remember Again, when you were making this oh one. So this is probably my most used, second most used quilt. Uh -huh. It's always on my couch. Um, I use it summer, winter, doesn't matter. Mm. My little sweater quilt. It has all of the different textures in it. Um, mm. This is probably the other. Uh, Your other plaid. My <laughs> other plaid flannel that I am hoping I can find all the bolts of. I want to make mm. pajamas in it. I want to make uh -huh. all the quilts in it, all the pillows in mm -hmm. it. Um, I mm -hmm. just love it. I have that bamboo batting in here, yeah. and you can just, I don't know if you're able to just even just tell as we're moving it around. So drapey. Um, how drapey and how, it's Squishy just, it's a hug every mm -hmm. time I touch it, and I just love this one. Oh. Um, and again, I mean, I love piecing. Mm -hmm. um, this is not terribly complicated, but no. I do kind of like, you know, a little bit cutesier stuff. Yeah. I guess. And I yeah. love the quilting on this. So you did, it's kind of like a... It's like a yeah. Celtic knot, yeah. it kind of looks like. Yeah. And, and I love how you left this nice little mm -hmm. um, space between yeah. the two. It just, it lends to the drapey, Yeah, I was cuddly. trying to mimic like the cable in a knit sweater. Oh, perfect, okay. That's what I was trying it to totally mimic. It totally looks like that. I was yeah. trying to think of the right word. Yeah, this block cabling. right here really shows that. Yeah. That is, that is gorgeous. Thanks. Love it, love it, love it. I know, yeah. I see this and I'm like, I think I need to borrow that pattern yeah. from you. <laughs> yeah. So this is probably one of my favorite blocks. Mm -hmm. that, and, and I know it has a lot of different names. And, and oh, I yeah. think this was actually like maybe the Christmas Joy quilt pattern. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a pretty just traditional block. I, sometimes mm -hmm. I hear it or some variation there of like the sisters or the friend block. Mm -hmm. Or I've heard, you know, there's some, depending upon if, how it's put together. Right, right? and where, where the color and placement is. And where the colors is. are and mm -hmm. all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, so I do occasionally love a good traditional quilt block. It's gorgeous. And I love it in just kind of doing two colors, mm -hmm. um, really just allowing it to just be the show and then finding a backing oh, fabric that. that really, you know, brings it out. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, it's kind of an odd, but this is one of my favorite Christmas quilts, right? Oh yeah. So you have I the, you have the hunter, the, the Christmas mm -hmm. green, mm -hmm. and then you kind of have more of a maroon and it kind of has some of the gold in it. Yeah. Um, I got brave and I used gold quilting thread oh, on the background, did. on Look the backing. At that. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Yeah. Oh. So I just, this has been one of my favorite, favorite quilts as well. This is the other couch quilt and they get used every single day. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Those couch quilts. Yes. They're awesome. So probably oh. <laughs> my most recent <laughs> obsession has been with Alexia's um, most recent um, handful of fabric yeah, the lines woven through line. the, all her woven ones What's through it the Ruby Stars. I, warp I don't, and, isn't it called Warp, warp, and, warp and Weft, West? maybe? I think we I might have not a, have that right. We might I need to double check that. Too. <laughs> yeah, and so I just love them. This one I mixed with just oh, a solid, a traditional white, but I loved how it really kind of mm -hmm. has this retro feel to it. Um, I love the colors. Um, I love the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it has a bamboo batting and it has a woven on the back. Um, oh, yeah. And it was a really fun quilting pattern to use as yeah. well. I don't know if it's showing up, um, but it's kind of these little birds. Oh yeah, I love yeah. that. That's so it's cool. It's just a really fun, fun quilt. I love I love this block that you used here. I mean, really, when you stop and look mm -hmm. at it, it's a modern half square triangle. It's just a modern diamond, it's a half, modern half square triangle. It's a half, it a half yeah. rectangle, a half square rectangle, yeah. a half Re rectangle. Yes, all it is. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But that's what yeah. it is. It looks so cool. Oh yeah. my gosh, I love that. I love this one with the bright white. You'll mm -hmm. notice a lot of mine are a little bit more subtle yeah. um, that we're going to see for my last few quilts here. Yeah. Um, but I do love it with a bright white as well. It's so gorgeous. I do like to play with the backgrounds, you know, whether it's a little darker, mm -hmm. lighter, more peppy. Um, I don't, I like everything. You do, you do, you do. Yeah. You do a little bit of everything, which I love. Okay, so this Same is my most gone. used quilt. Oh my gosh, it's um, awesome. So this is with oh. all wovens. There's not a non-woven in there. There's a couple oh. solids, I guess, that were in the line. Yeah. Um, but these are all wovens. Woven. It's a lightweight um, bamboo and mm -hmm. both the backing oh. and the, um, binding are in wovens as well. Yep. Um, it was a little tricky because wovens like to move a lot and this is a lot of piecing and there's yeah. a lot of points. Um, I actually made three of these. Wow. Um, so I kept one and two were gifts. Um, oh. I sleep with this quilt every single night and I wash it <laughs> every couple of it. weeks and it is just getting softer and mm -hmm. drapier and it is just my most favorite. Oh my I love that. I love so that if quilt. you have not dabbled 
in wovens or some different textures, yeah. I really recommend doing it. So this, yes. is this is my most recent. So my daughter, we, always, we love going to the movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always take a quilt with me, and I took that quilt with me, um, and then she carried it out to the car for me, and she was like, wait, wait. a second, this is different than all the other quilts, what, what is happening? Mm. And I could just see her little wheels uh -huh, turning in uh -huh, her brain, uh -huh. and I was like, well, it's what we call wovens, and blah, 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 and she was like, I need that <laughs> right now, mom. And I so love that. We got on the Instagram. She picked mm -hmm. out the, mm -hmm. the Sparrow's oh, quilt. So cute. Um, we went to a local store. And we, we filled in some blanks. She wanted mm -hmm. this kind of softer palette. Um, these were the colors that she wanted. And I just finished this top the other day, so it will get on the long arm this weekend. Um, but she, it was it's so funny. They are once you feel one, you yeah. will oh. need one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know. I just I just made one too, and yeah. it's become it's the quilt on the end of my bed. So yes, so pretty. Oh. All right, I oh. think this is the last quilt that I brought, it and is. this is another one where I'm kind of mixing a more traditional quilting mm -hmm. cotton with some Essex mm -hmm. um, and some linens. Um, again, solids, but yet when it's put together, it has a very high visual impact. It would yes. be a fun one to hang on a wall yes. um, and use in that sort of situation. It also has a woven back. Um, I love that companies are coming out mm. with different textures, yeah. um, and this one also, of course, showed off some of that kind of earthy um, quilting as yeah. well. Yeah, I love this quilt pattern. I've yeah. used it on. It's a fun one. So it comes many together quilt quick, projects. Comes together quickly. I know some people are nervous about curves, mm -hmm. and I highly recommend a really big curve to start mm -hmm. off. Yep. Um, and there's only a few, and only a couple of them you actually have to piece together to meet, which is also <laughs> key. Um, so you only have to really match up three and the rest. So it's sometimes if you're nervous about curves, um, you can find the right quilt top pattern to ease into them. Oh, that's awesome. But this is probably more my, my aesthetic right now. These your last current, like, of quilts. today. This yes. is this As is you what can you're see, loving. we've got to finish the binding yep, on these. Yep, yep, <laughs> I know. I was going to say, <laughs> this is a... Got to put it on the long arm this weekend. This is a Friday. This is a Friday during yes, lunch, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can start... You often come up and yes. sit and work on mm -hmm. binding. We can chat about the next week's stuff we have going yeah. on, and we just do a little binding. So, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Well, Sarah... This has been amazing. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I, you know, I know that you're a prolific quilter, but to actually see, like, yeah. we should actually have um, Nick focus on the pile <laughs> of quilts here. So we pull, we push everything off the table, and you guys should see how big this is. This is, this is. Although I have to say, I, you know, I'd probably bring in this many too if I yeah. did something well, like and, this. and when you asked me, I still have some over there I that know. didn't get selected here. I probably have two quilt ladders in different offices mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. all of my quilts on them. I was noticing as I went around the corner to grab some water before we started, I have a couple hanging yep, up. You do. Um, I, so yeah, and I probably have um, oh, another. at least this much or if not more at home that uh -huh. we use often or that are in bins. Maybe they're, you know, they kind of get rotated. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things recently because I have accumulated so many quilts uh -huh. um, is gifting them. And yes. I get very attached to my quilts. You do. I, I do. They're mm -hmm. all my little babies. Mm -hmm. um, but but I also recognize that quilts sitting in tubs for years on end is not doing anybody any favors. Right. Um, and it's always really hard, like how do you match a quilt with a person? Yeah. So one of yeah, my yeah. favorite things over the last few years is I post a picture of the quilt like on Facebook and mm -hmm. I say, hey, this quilt needs its forever home. Tell me why you're that forever home. Tell me why you love this quilt. Hey, you know, and I give a little prompt. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting the people that comment and what they comment and I have found the most perfect homes for some oh. quilts that have just, the stories have brought me to tears. Um, you know, it's just been amazing and that's just a great way to know what people like yeah. and for them to really appreciate those quilts. Um, that might make a whole nother great episode to go that's, into some of those. Um, actually, there has be been fun. some really, really great matchings in the world yeah. between quilts. So, um, and it's really great to see them out in the world and mm -hmm. being loved. And my favorite thing is when I get, people will send pictures yes. of those quilts being used. I had one the other day, I, um, it was a quilt that I really loved, gave it to a new mom, mm -hmm. and the other day she sent me a picture with her baby crawling on it, Aww. and it just warmed my heart so Aww. much. Um, another one I had made, and I had, when I made it, I even thought, I bet this will go in my friend's yurt. I bet this oh. will be perfect for that. And um, when I put it up saying, this needs a forever home, of course she commented, and yeah. I was like, good, good, good. good, good, good. <laughs> um, and so I ended up gifting it for her. She actually had her grandmother's quilt in the yurt as well. So oh. I knew she appreciated quilts. She oh. loved that quilt. She always talked to me about it because she knew I was a quilter. Um, and I'm <laughs> excited to say, <laughs> hasn't actually made it to her yurt. It's on their bed every day. 
Um, oh, which either way, even, it even works. better. <laughs> it's getting used. Someday it'll end up there, I'm sure of it. So it's fun to oh. sort of let, let it put it out in the world and to mm -hmm. see the homes that they find. So that's been really, really a fun new thing for me in my quilting journey because yeah. I've got enough. Yeah. <laughs> and I keep yeah. making them. <laughs> oh, I, I love your idea and I keep thinking, I need to yeah. do that sometime because yeah, yeah, yeah all those quilts that are sitting in the closet. They're just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the get them quilts. out of the world. Get yeah, them. yeah, absolutely. That's why we do it, right? Yeah, okay. it is. Well, thanks so much for sharing, Thank you. Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank oh. you if you've made it through this far, I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, happy quilting. Yeah, we'll see ya. Bye.